And we begin today at noon with new information after a young girl drowned in Greenwood. I'm Felicia Lawrence and today for Matthew Foltz and right now we're learning the age of the girl is just four years old. Police say they just got a call last night of a girl missing on Padre Lane. That's near East Main Street and Sheik Road. An officer found the girl in a pond behind houses in the area. He jumped in to get her and tried to perform CPR, but she was pronounced dead at the hospital. Initial reports say she was in town visiting family and they were looking for her leading up to calling 911. We're going to have more on this story tonight at 13 News at 5. And this afternoon, an Indianapolis family is telling 13 News about a brand new lead in a 31 year old cold case. Carmen Van Hus was just 19 years old when she was brutally raped and murdered in her Indianapolis apartment. And now a Missouri man is behind bars for the crime. Our Marina Silva spoke with Carmen's brother, who's not ready to talk on camera, but he's breathing a sigh of relief that a suspect has finally been arrested. It's been 31 years since Jimmy Van Hus has hugged his sister Carmen. Now he's reliving the trauma of that night in March 1993. Police called him Friday after a major break in his sister's case thanks to a match on DNA. Police arrested Dana Shepard in Missouri. Police say his DNA from the scene was eventually put into national and state databases. In 2013, a partial profile was developed. A decade later, Van Hus says it was a distant cousin who pinged a match that eventually led detectives to Shepard. Van Hus says his 19-year-old sister loved animals. She was a freshman in college studying art when she was brutally murdered. According to court documents, Carmen Van Hus was raped and stabbed 61 times. Her father found her body after going to check on her. Jimmy was a freshman at the time of his sister's death and found out when he turned on the news and saw his father crying. Jimmy says their dad was never the same. He died in 2002, never knowing who killed his daughter. Jimmy speaking to 13 News on behalf of their family to keep his sister's memory alive. Van Hus says he hopes more cold cases like his sister's will be solved using DNA. And he's also thankful to the IMPD detective who worked on this case for years. IMPD is planning a news conference tomorrow and Van Hus plans to be there. Investigators just got a huge break in another cold case. The Johnson County Coroner just announced they identified remains found over 30 years ago. They were first discovered in 1993, just south of I-65 and County Line Road. This area is now the Audi Golf Course. The Johnson County Coroner is now saying the remains belong to Michael Davis from South Carolina. He was in his mid-20s when he died. His family had not seen or heard from him since the 80s. The coroner has not released Davis's cause of death yet but we expect to learn more details in a news conference this Thursday. And a South Bend police officer is now on leave after a shooting. Officers were called to a disturbance around 4 a.m. yesterday. One officer reported shots being fired and says he shot back. We know a man is being treated at the hospital after being shot. A woman was also hurt, but not by gunfire. No officers were injured and we're working to find out more. Of course, we'll keep you updated on air and online at WTHR.com. And a Plainfield police officer is now recovering at home after a police chase ended in a fatal crash. We know the names of the two people killed. 78-year-old Barbara Williams and 79-year-old Benny Williams died in this crash. It started when officers were called to a report of a person down at a Long John Silver's Friday evening. Then officers chased the suspect who drove off from the scene. Well, the officer followed the suspect's car through the intersection of US 40 and Smith Road. That's when the cruiser hit a car with Barbara and Benny inside. That officer was taken to the hospital for minor injuries and was released. We're taking a turn to weather now. Lindsay Monroe is here to fill us in because today was noticeably cooler. Yes, yeah, it started officially September meteorological fall. So I think we're all, you know, kind of thinking cooler, right? Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're going to see below average temperatures today and tomorrow, but we're not quite transitioning into that fall season just yet. We've got a couple more 80s on the way for later this week. Do that. Want to start off with this aerial map of where this high pressure dome is in control. This is basically going to be the main weather feature that will influence our weather over the next few days. High pressure signifying clear skies and 
and a northerly wind flow around that area of high pressure going to keep the temperature down. Sunshine, plenty of it up in Carmel as we speak. A beautiful view there, by the way. 68 the current temperature. We have numbers now starting to rise back into the 70s across central Indiana. 74 right now in Shelbyville. It's 71 in Muncie. But comparing these numbers to where we were 24 hours ago, most of us running nearly 10 degrees cooler. So that just kind of goes to show you the type of pattern that we're going to be in over the next few days. Here's your forecast for the rest of this afternoon. We will rise back back to the upper 70s around 77 by 3 p.m. will be your high today, keeping skies clear this evening. We will look at those 80s returning plus that next rain chance. It's in your seven day. We'll get to it in just a bit. All right, Lindsay, thank you. On to more news. The Lawrence Fire Department is now investigating after a fire left a family without a home. It happened at a home near 62nd Street and Carroll Road early yesterday morning. That fire seriously damaged two houses. A third had some minor damage. Thankfully, though, no one is hurt. We're going to keep you posted on their investigation. And this video from Center Grove High School shows a set of stands taking out a goal post on their football field during strong thunderstorms. So this happened Friday night when the Center Grove Trojans were going against the Fort Wayne Carroll Chargers. Head coach Eric Moore says multiple lightning delays continue to push the game back. And as the players waited out the last delay in the locker room, well, the teams just called it. Coach Moore says without the quick response from school officials, people still could have been in the stands when the storm picked up. But that 15 minute buffer that we took to empty everybody out of the stadium really say might have saved a lot of people someone's life or something. You, you never know. The bleachers have since been pushed back. Coach Moore says his team will work around this hurdle. And TSA is dealing with possibly record breaking numbers of travelers this Labor Day weekend. But during this busy travel period, the Federal Aviation Administration wants Hoosiers to keep in mind the dangers of pointing a laser at airplanes. The agency says Indiana continues to see these incidents at quote consistently high rate. According to the FAA, there were 317 laser strikes aimed at planes between January and July of this year. This is just in Indiana alone, and there were 13,000 nationwide. Well, our 13 investigates team previously reported how dangerous this can be for pilots. Unfortunately, people think that they can aim a laser at an aircraft and that it's going to be a little tiny dot, but it's not. It's a big blob of light by the time it reaches the pilot, and then it's hard for the pilot to see through that. Well, pointing a laser at an airplane is a federal crime. The FAA says it will fine people between eleven dollars and $38,000 for a laser strike. Well, many of you are off work or off school for Labor Day today, and there's a lot of places closed. So here's what you need to know. It's a federal holiday, so all city, state, and federal offices are closed. And this includes the Postal Service, so no mail today. Banks will be closed as well. Some stores like Costco will be closed, and Aldi will have limited hours. But many stores are still staying open. Major chain supermarkets like Target and Walmart, they operate like normal. And then most Meyer and Kroger stores will also be open as well. Well, Labor Day is often seen as the unofficial end to summer. So one of the most popular activities today, spending a day on the boat, of course. Guys, Reservoir is expecting a lot of visitors today, and we talked with some workers there this weekend. They say visitors should expect extra DNR patrols out on the water today. And we also talked with a group already out there. They say that they take extra care to make sure that everyone on the boat is cool and safe. Sure it's going to be a lot of people out on the water today, so you know, you just got to yeah. take, uh, you got to take care of every, everybody's going to be on the water. You bring can't water. just worry about yourself. Yeah, water, not beer. Yeah, you need water. You can see they're already having a lot of fun. So if you're out on any body of water today, remember there are some rules that you need to follow. So if you're driving a boat, make sure that you're aware of idle zone markers and then ramps and giving, um, uh, uh, make sure you're aware of the markers, the ramps and giving other boats enough room and make sure that the driver stays sober. And the biggest thing here, wear your life jacket at all times and make sure that it fits right. Workers encourage you to always look at the rules before hitting the water. 